first turn new to me so give me a moment to reflect and i'll get better usually but that's not the point of your presence i need to know that there's more i keep on learning this lesson i need to grow what's up welcome to this won't last long the weekly podcast where i talk about my life since the last episode and some uh, news from the week like pop culture stuff like that so last time i talked about um san diego san diego comic-con and all the news that was relevant to me from that um basically daredevil born again was announced as well as some other daredevil related things and um Basically, I just decided it's about damn time to um, watch Daredevil because the original Daredevil show because I haven't um, seen it ever. That's a lie. But, well, basically, like, I I grew up, um, obviously, with my dad, but, like, uh, it was, I think it, I think it was, like, a while after it, after it had come out, 2014, 15, around that time, I think. Maybe a little while after, 16. Um, when me and my dad got, got around to it, but... Basically, yeah, man. Um, we were just... We just both... Like, we're, we're amazed by it. him, obviously, more so, because he was a fan of comics, and... Um, you know, he, like, grew up with this stuff, but I, I didn't grow up with Daredevil, but I still, like, I grew up to love the type of character, the type of, like, um, you know, like, broken street-level hero type thing, you know, Spider-Man, Batman, um, Daredevil, Punisher, Um, you know, those characters like that, you know, the flawed, (coughs) jeez, my cough, okay, um, the flawed type of, like, broken street level hero. I think Spider-Man, Spider-Man would probably be my favorite, just because I think he, uh, I think Spider-Man has the most to to offer as a character, that may, that may be a hot take, but I I, I think he just has the most to offer as a character. Um, compared to the other few that I mentioned, but yeah, man, um, when I was like, God, that, that was like eight years ago, if we're talking about 2014, so I would have been like, shit, eight, ten at the most, so, I mean, obviously I didn't understand a lot of what I do now about the stuff that's in the show um, as I would back then but I just remember uh, loving the shit out of it loving the shit out of that Netflix Marvel Universe and wondering why it was gone so soon when it um, when it eventually was gone but yeah we um my dad stayed up. <coughs> Fuck. Sorry. <coughs> My dad um let me stay up late before school the next day, and uh, then we watched the first episode. And yeah, man, I, I just remember loving the shit of it. Like I said, and and how a superhero show is showing real, like, a a real human, like, flawed character who wore a vigilante costume in black, and then eventually red, and, you know, but still. (coughs) The superhero show is showing real human emotions, real human problems, 
while while he wears tights while he wears tights and it's it's amazing man it's it's truly an amazing thing to see and yeah, not just daredevil you know them spot you know the other the things i said um it, even not just the street level heroes you know there's there's iron man with his selfishness in his arc there and then there's um You know, and then there's the opposite with Cap, with his selflessness, selflessness, and then his arc into selfishness, um, and how amazing those arcs are. <clears throat> and there's also th like, kind of like more. Um... Sorry, hold on. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, and then there's characters like um, what was I gonna say? You know, there's there's more subtle like character arcs, and um, examples and examples of that human um, character like. For example, there's Black Panther in Civil War with his with his journey through vengeance and how he overcomes that not to try overcomes that vengeance to truly become the Black Panther, the hero that uh, he was unfortunately short lived as. But still he he went through that human a um, very real journey after his father died. I think that's what any one of us would do. You know, we would we would have that vengeance in our hearts and we would want we would want to find the person who did it. I'm sure any one of us would. Um And maybe not the same for Daredevil. Maybe you know we we wouldn't we wouldn't try to help every single person in the city, but we can relate to his personal problems. We can relate to him pushing. We can relate to Matt pushing his friends away. Because he's scared of letting people in, we can relate to um, his desire to help people to an extent. <laughs> um, we can relate to shit, man. We can relate to just, just I guess his. I, mean, I guess it's just good, his good heart, his good nature. Most of us, I would hope. And you know, also, he's a blind, he's also a blind man, so I'm sure when Daredevil was, you know, kind of first coming out, um, you know, in the comics and stuff, how amazing that was, that was for, um, like, you know, blind people to, you know, find out and, and, um, you know, finally, I was going to say something. I didn't realize that's not okay to say. I was gonna, no, um, you know, to finally. How do I even say that? I'm sure it was amazing for blind people when Daredevil um, 
was first coming out in the comics. You know, to finally have someone on the screen they can relate to. Um, who wears tights and fights crime. I'm sure that was a great thing at the time. Yeah, man, it's it's still a great thing. Um, and it's just the show, man. You know, I don't remember how much me and my dad saw of the Netflix shows. Um, I remember watching quite a bit. I think we watched every single one except Punisher. And I think that was it. I think just except for Punisher and maybe Jessica Jones. I think that's all we didn't see. But, um, yeah. I, uh, I just remember loving the. I just remember loving the ever loving shit out of the whole universe. And. And then, then life happened, you know, and my parents got divorced and. Just. I guess just since it was a whole special thing with my dad, I just didn't really want to. I guess it just wasn't a thing on my mind to watch it for like years after. Um, until well recently. Um, I guess just, you know, to block it up, to block it out and not focus on the pain of that. I think I just didn't watch the shows anymore. Um, then me and my dad are falling out and that didn't help. Um, so I mean, then recently I kind of just been like, me and my dad are good now, I might as well watch this fucking thing. Um, so... I did, and I binged it. it. Took like a little over a week to get through that and the Defenders. Um, shit was amazing. I. It's probably. I would go as far as to say. This this isn't the first. I'm not the first person to say this. I know that. I think Daredevil and that whole Netflix universe is the best thing. Probably besides besides the first three phases. Because um, that's a feat in of itself. Um, you know, with Endgame and, you know, from Iron Man to Endgame and then to Captain America and then to Endgame. And those, the arcs of, like, the main characters... Besides all of those feats that Marvel has done, I think, I think Daredevil and that whole universe of street of street level um, awesomeness is probably the best thing that Marvel has ever made. Besides that, and I mean that man because it's just like I could talk about like every fucking scene, and just and, and now with you know last couple of years me developing kind of like a more creative you know filmmaking like perspective um i appreciate the shit out of the show more than like an average like viewer who may not have an interest in filmmaking as i do or at least not to my extent um you know would appreciate it for obviously it's amazing without that, and perfect without that. But my god. I mean, every shot, every, like, fucking writing choice, all the dynamics. Uh, <clears throat> like, every single... Um, sorry, excuse me. Like, every single fucking scene is important, and it's just, like, like, with, with some superhero things, and with some just movies and shows in general, you know, some things are unnecessary, and some things, some characters don't need to be there, some 
arcs, some arcs don't need to happen, some dialogue doesn't need to be there, but with Daredevil, like, even the jokes, um, You know, even jokes with Foggy and stuff. It just, it serves, like, it, it's comedic uh, levity. And every joke with Foggy in season one, um, spoilers, by the way, you know, is is great at the time, but then it, it makes episode eight, um, or sorry, episode ten, and Nelson versus Murdoch even more painful. Because... Because you realize uh, their friendship is not there anymore; it's uh, it's gone, and they're not going to have those jokes anymore, and they're not really true friends anymore because because Matt lied to him, Matt betrayed them, and they're not um, he he's not trusted by Foggy anymore, at least not for a long time, until really kind of season three. Um, But even though, you know, he betrayed Foggy, they still, he still finds a way to be there for Matt. And I, I think that's a, a really good, you know, dynamic. Because, you know, Foggy and Karen and the rest of the side characters, you know, they're side characters. But in any other show, they would just be Titled, you know, the side characters, the one, the, the, um, the background characters, whatever. But Daredevil, there's truly supporting characters. A, a good example of this would be, um, Andrew and Toby in No Way Home. Like, they serve the story, they serve the main character. And, um, you know, the, they're not just there for fun. But yeah, it's, uh, the, the their dynamic was great and and when Karen was introduced uh, it was it was a rough introduction I, I think that would be kind of a criticism as well um kind of my first criticism you know it, it was kind of a rough very rough introduction you know her covered in like blood and um you know gruesome and shit and it's just like It's just like, I get it, it's a dark show, but for her to be like more comedic stuff throughout the rest of kind of the show, to be honest, um, outside of some moments, it's just like, why have that such rough, like dark introduction to her character? But it's just a small nitpick, honestly. Um, I really don't think, I, I know people say that season two of Daredevil is the worst. But to be honest, it's like... I, I don't find a problem with it. Yes, Fisk isn't there. But he's not what makes the show good. Like, like for example, season two. Season two has... Has Matt have everything um, he wants as Matt. But then... But then that gets taken away from him, and he has everything he wants as Daredevil, as the vigilante inside of him. And season two really explores that, really explores the two halves of Matt Murdock. And um, to have it be like, I don't know, it's just like, you really have to say that season two is the, like, I don't know, I, I just find that such an ignorant statement. You know what I mean? Because it's, it's like, how do you find a worse season of a show when it explores that deep of a concept kind of thing? You know what I mean? It's just... I, don't know, I find it kind of dumb that people are saying that, or people have said that.
But either way, um, I, I can kind of understand why they would say it's the weakest season. Because, I mean, it, it is, like, it, it's definitely the most experimental, I would say, because season one and three, um, by all means aren't simple, by any means aren't simple of seasons, but they do, you know, have the same kind of story, um, Fisk and Daredevil. Kingpin and Daredevil um, head to head that's kind of the story with season 1 and season 3 and season 2 is like the most different so I could say I could understand in that sense why people would say season 2 is the worst but I guess I just I don't know man I I, I just had no problem with it. In Punisher, I mean, he was just, he was just insane, and I, I really hope, first of all, I really hope everyone comes back um, into the MCU side of it, um, especially John Bernthal as Punisher, and everyone else like Karen and Foggy, but it's just, he was amazing and as the Punisher, and I'm glad that he had a show. I really hope he comes back um, in, in something, man. Um, if that's the Thunderbolts, that would be awesome for the Thunderbolts to have the Punisher. I don't know, but that'd be cool. But yeah, I, I know that people are like, kind of like, not hopeless, but like doubtful in the Disney Plus kind of universe that they're going to build with the street level heroes, uh, with Daredevil and everyone else coming back, everyone else coming, hopefully. Um, but I mean... If, if you're going to have Daredevil and Kingpin, you, you have to have everyone else. It's just, yeah, I, I know people are doubtful. I mean, if they're already making Deadpool 3, it, w wouldn't they make another R-rated thing? Or, like, other R-rated projects? Like, it, it, it just makes sense for them to... Or it doesn't make sense for... Uh, Marvel and Kevin Foggy to make one R-rated project and then give up on it, on the R-rated side of it, of, of the MCU. That doesn't, that doesn't make sense to me. Um, I mean, I, I can understand in, in the sense of like, for example, like Moon Knight, how they cut away at the kind of more violent scenes and like kind of Kind of similar to the other like Disney Plus shows, but you can have it be TVMA. You can like again, like you have Deadpool three. I'm assuming like all of the other movies that they would have that on Disney Plus a while after Deadpool three would release in theaters. So why not? Why you know again like it wouldn't make sense. For them to not have their double be the same. So. Yeah, younger kids are going to watch it anyway, but it's good. Who cares? They're not going to grow up to be murderers. <laughs> yeah, just the, the whole show. Um, you know, I, I might not watch... It's just Daredevil was so good that I'm I, I might not watch the rest of the you know Jessica Jones and Luke Cage and um, Iron Fist. 
I get. I might just watch re. I I might just watch recaps. Because like I kind of get the gist of the characters, just from who they are in Defenders and who they are. And, um, just like what I know of them from Defenders, like Luke Cage fights crime, has has the superpowers of. Um, almost in indestructibility from like experiments in prison and then Iron Fist is related, is related to the hand and is trained by them and stuff and then he goes against them like and then with, uh, with Jessica Jones she's awesome you know she's an invest she's a, a private investigator sorry about that private investigator and for al alias investigations for her um, um, investigation business, and then she she just does that, and then uses her strength, uh, her super strength, to fight to fight off the the bad guys. You know, it's, it's pretty simple, and that took about like a like thirty seconds to fucking explain uh, each of them, so. You know, I, I don't think I need to watch all three seasons of Jessica Jones to understand her. You know, like, I know everything with Purple Man. And how he um, is, like, kind of a rapist character and stuff like that. And how that makes Jessica Jones the character that she is. The person that she is. And how closed off she is, but... You know, Defenders gave me all that I need to know, I think, for the rest of them. And I don't think I'll watch the rest of those shows. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think I'll watch the rest of those shows outside of Daredevil before something like Thunderbolt comes out or something like that. Um, it's another thing. Um, you know, a, a team up with Luke Cage and... Spider-Man comes out. I don't know. I feel like I know everything about that. That I need to know. And it's necessary to know. But yeah. Back to Daredevil. I'm just... Like, it, it's still odd to think that a superhero show... Also, outside of all the human things, like, like uh, pushing friends away and stuff like that, and those personal problems, this superhero show explores Catholicism, and Matt's struggles with that, and Matt's inner depth in struggling to kill uh, Kingpin in Season 3. How a lot of times... Um, just based off memory, like, like just based off recent memory, like more, more, mostly in season one, how before Matt beats the living shit at a, a criminal, he does the, um, you know, like forgive me, to God, and you know, it, it's interesting. It's interesting that he still, you know, b believes in God. After, like after he's seen so much bad in the world, how he still believes there's a God. You know what I mean? How he still does that. How he, um, for the audio listeners, I'm just doing the, um, like, like forgive me to God that people do. I. I think you know what I mean. I don't think I... Never mind. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah. It just... It explores so much with the Catholicism. And how Fisk is... Is the representation of the devil. And how... By the way, one of the best monologues... In the, in the whole series with Father Lantum. Um, explaining that... 
uh, the devil is real and walks among us. And then, because Matt was asking him, um, does the devil walk among us? And, and just the whole ten, like the whole like sheer determination to beat Fisk in that moment on, uh, on Charlie Cox's face. Like, I, the acting in, in the show was, um, was incredible for, from everyone. And most drama shows these days, I mean, that they aren't as violent as these Netflix shows, which doesn't help with them. You know, for example, there's uh, what would be one? I guess The Flash or some of those shows, some of those CW shows. Um, most of the acting in those shows sucks, and in these Netflix shows, it doesn't. In Daredevil, the acting doesn't suck. It's not some over-exaggerated, you know, eyes batting like tears are coming out kind of acting. Or I like to call it TikTok acting. <laughs> but um, it's not that. It's It's like they're real people. And that's what a good... Um, actors should portray a character as, I think. I think they should make you feel for them, make you, you know, that that's what, that's what good art does. It, it makes you feel something. And man, did I feel something um, throughout this series. Daredevil, Daredevil made me scared. Daredevil made me jump out of my seat. I mean, it, so many times, like it, when um, what's something? When I finally saw the, it was in season one. It was one of the earliest things that happened. It was in the the second episode, and it was the famous hallway fight, which um, I didn't remember seeing. I probably I probably seen it somewhere, but I don't remember seeing it. And then I finally saw it, and then and then I immediately started like cheering for him and then just I immediately I immediately you know with with the creative pers with the creative perspective that I have now caught the symbolism with um with Matt carrying the little boy carrying him to his father who's worried for him um and the symbolism of that saving him when no one could save Matt from and carry him to his father and carry him to safety and the symbolism with that that he, that he can save these people these children, these women, these men and in the process of doing so save himself and that's amazing symbolism to me And I don't think something like something simple like fucking um not Loki but I I guess the first Avengers movie would do, you know? Stuff like Avengers doesn't explore doesn't explore that. Doesn't explore Saving yourself through saving other people. It has good action. The, the first Avengers movie. You know, it, it doesn't have this, this depth. And the, the, the main MCU is an incredible thing. But it doesn't have what these... What Daredevil has. It doesn't have this depth of character. It doesn't have... You know, it, it doesn't have um it doesn't have really too much depth. 
you know, until more recent phases and movies and things. But before then, Daredevil was very much a thing, and um, it was revolutionary. I mean, I know Daredevil didn't invite the one long take hallway fights, but I swear they must have made them popular in some aspect. For good reason. <laughs> and there was something special. Um, it's it's truly special what what the people made and what the cast everyone was able to do with this show. How with um with good writing with a good cast with everything being good, being perfect, you have a show that you can you can think about constantly and find you can think about and then a new thing from it will pop into your head and then you'll be like, oh shit, I didn't notice that. Or oh shit, there is symbolism there. You know, it's like with um when I saw the finale for the first time I um the series the series finale when he was splattering the blood on the paint on the rabbit in a snowstorm the snowstorm um painting that Fisk has I didn't notice for shit the symbolism behind that. At first, not at all. I didn't notice that the blood being spattered onto the um, rabbit in a snowstorm painting uh, symbolized that. Because, you know, the rabbit in a snowstorm painting, the painting symbolizes that Fisk, that, that perfect man. That, that at least image of a perfect man that Fisk wants to put on, that Fisk wants to portray to the media and the, in the world, and the citizen and the citizens of New York and Hell's Kitchen. But the blood being spattered onto the painting symbolizes that that those chances of being that perfect man are shattered, are are bloodied, are dead. And uh, just as well as his chances of living a perfect life with Vanessa. And um, speaking of Vanessa, ever since I finished watching the show, I cannot stop saying like lines from like uh, Matt or like Fisk, um, just because. With with my impressions, I'm someone who like who likes to just analyze the shit out of the voice, and then try to do the impression, just like analyze it. With um, Fisk and Mad did the same. And I I think I think just to me personally. So I don't think anyone else does this with their impressions. I don't know, maybe. But just, I think that's when I when I find a good series, I tend to. Um, I guess recently, you know, in the last couple of years, I started doing impressions. Um, I guess that's when. I guess that's when I find like a really, really good series. When I start, when I find myself doing the impressions of the characters in the series, <laughs> because like the dialogue was so good, or the, the acting was so good there, or their speech pattern, or something like that. Um, a good example is that is that final interaction 
between Fisk and um, and Matt. And um, you know the the um, Fisk wanting Matt to kill him, wanting to bring that bring that devil out of him, and the <laughs> symbolism behind that, but also because. Um, you know, the physical wanting Matt to kill him, and then Matt going, no, you don't get to destroy who I am. Um, and then, like, you will go back to prison, live out the rest of your miserable life, that whole interaction. I keep on saying that, and it's, it's just amazing. And then the, just every, like, every season is a story in of itself and that's also amazing to me that like you could you could watch season one and that's all you could totally just watch season one and that's all you would need to know um because season one if you don't watch anything else i mean it's a perfect story otherwise you know season one to three but season one is a whole entire story in of itself if you don't watch anything else because Fisk goes away at the end. You don't know what happens to him yet. Um, you're left to think he stays away for life. You don't know. And then Daredevil is, le is left to fight crime in his new awesome fucking iconic suit. That's like an entire story. In of itself, and then season two um, is not an entire story because it finishes with Defenders. Se or season two Defenders, um, <laughs> as one thing, is also an entire story in of itself. It's the story of the hand. And, you know, being teased throughout multiple projects. A little bit of season one of Daredevil, it was teased, and... Um, And then obviously Iron Fist. And then obviously uh, Defenders. Yeah, before Defenders in Season 2, The Hand, it wasn't really a big, big play in this universe outside of Iron Fist. So to have that story, to have Stick just straight up being dead, To have, to have Electra die at the end of season two, uh, part one, <laughs> I guess, I, I should say, but it's just, it was an entire story of everyone coming, to, coming together to destroy the hand and then winning, and that's all the story is, but then not everybody wins. Because Matt is saved by his mom, uh, s sister Maggie in the in the church, and then I think everyone else is good. And then oh yeah, other than Foggy and Karen, Foggy and Karen are left to think Matt is uh, dead, <laughs> unfortunately. But yeah, I, I think season three, even though the entire series is perfect find it back I think season three is probably the best uh, season because even though season one was pretty much the same story Fisk versus uh, Daredevil season three is the same thing except you have you have Matt versing him being personal instead of just wanting to help the city because season one was literally just Matt wanting to help the city, wanting to take this guy down in order to be a hero. But through season three, you have Fisk. Um, even though it's not said explicitly, pretty much knowing Matt is Daredevil. So that in of itself is a personal, makes it personal between between the two. But to have him threaten Foggy and Karen to um, to have 
to have him almost killed. To um. To have Matt's image, public image as Daredevil, um, completely tarnished by uh, by Bullseye. It's incredible symbolism, and it's just. It, it makes it so that that's not why the show and the character is so good. Because, yeah, you could just look at the flashy suits and be like, wow, this is amazing. But beyond that incredible red suit, you know, like th- that's why that's why I find that Matt being back in the black suit for, um, for season three, um, is beautiful because because that's not what makes the show good. It's like a meta reference to the show itself, saying saying to the viewer like, "We know you love it past the red shiny Daredevil suit. We know you love Matt as a person. We know you love Foggy and Karen as people. You know, it's not just the flashy red tights for you." And it's just like it's it's a labor of love, I think, that this show was. And I swear, bro, the this show better be canon to the MCU, because I don't know if I'll watch Daredevil: Born Again if this if the first if the original show is not canon. I don't. I'm not confident in saying that I will. So I hope it is. Um, yeah, man. And then I, I think I'm gonna write a video essay. I'm definitely gonna write a video essay on. I don't know about the topic. Um, I guess just why Daredevil is amazing. <laughs> I guess just what this, what this episode was. <laughs> Of the podcast, just me blushing over, it. just me. Um, just like, yeah, I guess, I guess, um, gushing over Daredevil, but like, for good reason, man. It's everything I already said, and um, and yeah, I can't wait to have that video. It's pretty, just <coughs> it's pretty, it's pretty much just gonna be what this was except in a more scripted format and me actually having a plan on what to talk about in that video there's definitely no rush for it as Daredevil will definitely stay relevant over the next long time (laughs) so don't have to worry about that but the video being relevant but um, I- I'm glad I went back into this universe now because that was the perfect time. You know, uh, Daredevil's coming back and She-Hulk in a week. And uh, <laughs> that's insane to me. But, and Daredevil's back, man, and... I'm glad I can. I'm glad I didn't have to wait. I'm lucky I didn't have to wait. But it's been four years to have him back. Or I guess three years. Um, Because of No Way Home and Hawkeye and whatnot. Yeah, it was was a. Amazing experience, and hopefully, I didn't restate too much. But yeah, it was it was incredible. Other than that one nitpick I said earlier, I really don't think there's like anything wrong with this fucking show. And for people saying that it's like it's too slow, 
it's too boring. Um, I haven't seen anybody saying that, but I'm sure some dumb people have said that. For, first of all, th- that's wrong. Um, it's not too slow or too boring. It's that, like, you're in their world with them. Um, that's why the scenes linger on. That's why the episodes are so long because that's why the scenes are so long because you, you experience everything with them. You, you hurt when Foggy and Ma- and Matt are fighting. But anyway, yeah, man. Um, Daredevil is an incredible experience, and I think that about wraps uh, about wraps up this not this podcast, but that section of this podcast. It's gonna be the main part of it, though. So, um, I don't think there's any, anything else really. I mean, I I worked on a lot of videos recently. I uh, I recently had COVID, which sucked ass. Um, but. I worked, I made a video during it, which kept me sane <laughs> during the isolation. I wrote a, uh, er, wrote, I made a COVID isolation kind of vlog video, which was fun. Um, oh yeah, thanks for the follow-up, by the way. Um, frog. <laughs> but yeah. Um, it, it was very fun. It was a very fun video to make. The COVID isolation video is basically just me trying not to lose my mind, <laughs> isolating pretty much. And then the other video I made was um, not a just not a just a thought. It was ah oh, fuck what was it ah. It was a TikTok, it was a TikTok reaction video. I was going back through my liked videos and watching a couple and talking about some, and talking about some of them. That was also a fun video to make. It, it was kind of annoying though, with um, editing wise, because like I recorded my uh, window, the window capture with the TikToks. But then, um, and just like the, the audio with my camera, and then with the laptop, like didn't sync up, which I guess would be on me, not the softwares that I was using. So I guess it's my fault. Maybe I'll work that out next time I do the video similar, but. Um, I, I guess I, I still came out with a good video on the other side, so that was fun, and then uh, I don't have much left on the list of ideas, which I'm very happy about. I'm getting back on working on my, uh, on my Choose Your Own Adventure project that I'm working on, uh, kind of inspired from stuff like Markiplier. And the stuff that he makes. So I'm excited to be getting back to doing that. My sister's going to help me a bit with that tomorrow before I go to work. Which I'm excited about. And then she's also going to help me tomorrow. <laughs> My help uh, by helping me make a skit that I had an idea for. Um, kind of inspired also, speaking of Mark Flyer. By Unis Honest, uh, if anyone watches Markiplier, or watched Unis Honest, but they made a video about He Who, uh, who is Mark's character of like a psychotic, like animal version of him, <laughs> of himself, and basically, I mean, I'm gonna be making something similar, like a documentary style thing of, I bought okay, so I bought a chicken mask, and it's basically it's basically gonna be my sister being um being interviewed and i'm gonna do like a funny i don't know british voice i don't know um just like a document a documentarian voice and she's gonna be like 
interviewed and it's kind of going to be like a talking head kind of like sitcom kind of style thing it's going to be like me kind of like thinking I'm a chicken and then the chicken mask taking over my life <laughs> as a human <laughs> and then basically yeah the chicken mask just I like do human things but then um like the mask since I think I'm a chicken it doesn't work out the the human thing so that's that's the joke of it and then um you know my sister being interviewed by the documentarian <laughs> so that would be a fun one to make and then after that I think I just have a few more kind of random videos and then um I guess just the daredevil video essay and then uh, that'll be it before school and I think I can do all that before uh before school and then I will still have content coming out because I have a announcements course that will be taking in grade 12 um basically you you make your own you know skits behind the scenes whatever for that you basically make your own show outside of just talking about the announcements to fill the time and then um i'll just be posting those on youtube so that'll be that'll be cool to do um then that, that'll still have content coming out and then i'll probably still be able to fit uh some some streams in hopefully the same schedule um twice a week hopefully so yeah don't know what else yeah haven't really been doing else much else um yeah but i am going to go to a art kind of thing to support my friends this weekend which i'm excited for and then I'm going to hang out with my uncle this weekend. So that'll be fun. And then, uh, and then, yeah. Right, and then I might make more Are You Happy things, which are like interview, it's like an interview thing um, for a company called Are You Happy? And then it's like you ask people if they're happy and then what they want to say to the world. And then that's pretty much it. And then they post it on their TikTok and I post it on mine. So that'll be fun. Hopefully I have the courage to do that. Yeah man. I'm uh I'm excited for everything coming out. I I I think I said this last time that hopefully like nothing like Daredevil get gets delayed. But I would think other things would get delayed. Like, I don't think any, I don't think all of this, all of these movies, all of these shows can come out in the next three years. Like, I highly, highly doubt that. And again, I think I said that last time, but like, man, three years, two full phases, two full phases. Like, think of like the Infinity Saga, because with, with, um, phase two and three you had 2013 and then until uh 2019 that was six years and that was two full phases probably more movies uh, than these so I, uh, I highly doubt that all of it can come out in three years. But hey, maybe. I don't know. But I mean, I I know people are talking about like superhero fatigue, fatigue, stuff like that. But honestly, and I'm not too exhausted by the whole superhero genre right now. Yes, there's a lot coming out and there's a lot to catch up on. But that's really the only nitpick. It's just a lot to watch. And I'm not complaining, because all of it is great to me. 
Yeah, some of it was mediocre, like Eternals and some other things. But, um, for, for the most part, everything superhero wise that's been coming out has been great. Most, most, not all. And DC is a whole nother cat in the bag that I don't want to open. Um, like, geez, man, Warner Brothers is this, are the stupidest motherfuckers. I cannot believe them. Like, they, they canceled Batgirl, man. I was so excited for that. I was so excited for that. That not just not just even just Michael Keaton returning, but Batgirl, like we haven't seen her lead anything. I don't think ever, other than like maybe the DC animated world. Other than that, she hasn't like led anything. Um, much else, live action. You know what I mean? So. I really wanted to see that. Um, yeah, man. Warner Brothers are stupid. <laughs> that's, all we need. that's all I really need to see on that. Hopefully, they eventually know what they're doing. And release Batgirl. But yeah. I think that about wraps up this episode. Hope you guys enjoyed. And this has been Michael Crates. And bye bye.